as I said, I really like using this um, fixture control just as a way to come up with some ideas. So we're going to go about this in two different ways. Um, no, actually, no, I'm going to use a slightly different method. So you remember we used um, this fixture generator. Actually, I'll show you both. Um, I'm going to add a new line. Go to the fixture generator, and we've got a movement generator here. And that mirrors the same grid in both. And we're going to um, add in a polygon with, let's just say, eight shapes. And then we'll see what that looks like when we move it. Oh, sorry, we need to choose a um, interval here. So I'm going to make it half a second again, keep it pretty quick. So you can see, as it goes around the polygon, so do our lights move around. Again, really simple. This effect generator is really is a fantastic tool. So I'm going to save that um, and we will call it mid scans circle move. Not a very original title, but hopefully I will be able to remember that one. So that's all there. Um, and in the same way, if I open the effect library, it's really this easy. Mid scan circle move, put it here, and <coughs> this time it's actually the fade that we're making use of rather than the wait time. So <laughs> adding a wait time would um, stop each light, pretty sure, as it goes around. So it would move to a new position and hold there, that would be the wait. And then the fade is actually the amount of time that it goes from one of those eight positions to the next. Um, so what I'm going to do is again we probably quite like this to go to the music because just generally that looks best. So we're going to click on it to select it, go to beats and this time we're going to arrange the beats on the fade time. And you'll see we've got it all stretched out here. And let's just see if that's worked. Okay, so, good to me. So really, look, no hands. Um, all I've done is push play, and we've got lights moving. Here we go slow, but it actually looks pretty cool. So we'll see them speed up again as we go back to each week. Not bad. Not bad. Um, <clears throat> so there we go, that was pretty easy to make them make a moving sequence. Um, and so what I'm going to do next is change color, we'll go from, from blue to orange. And I'm going to do it a different way, that is also possible in this effect generator. But there's another really important um, way of making of generating effects which I think we should probably cover and then that'll probably just about do us for this tutorial I think it's been pretty epic but um, let me just we'll just go over that final way so we'll add in another line because what we're going to do is generate this um, one manually so this time we're going to go to the effect library and we're going to choose to add a new light sequence by ourselves and so these are the mid scans color change is what we're going to go for. Um, so when we open that, you see we now have a blank thing. We haven't generated any cue points in our effect generator yet. So um, what I'm going to do is add in two cue steps. Um, one for blue and one for orange. So uh, we've got two generic cue steps uh, with a fade time of 
one second and a wait time of one second. That's the standard. Um, and again, because we've got our beat syncing working, we don't really need to adjust these fade times in here because that is what we are syncing to the beat just with those couple of easy clicks. So don't need to worry about that. What we need to do instead is go to our things and this is the important part. When we double click on one of these cue points, we enter into uh, automation mode. So we are working with the active scanner on channel 46. So go to the mixer panel. We find ourselves channel 46. So here is that light. And we've got blue, got our orange that we wanted, and our blue that we were using. Now you will notice that that light is red. Um, that, sorry, that number there is red. And that means that we have gone into automation mode. So I've double clicked, and now you'll see when I move, it's in red. And that means it's being recorded. Um, and actually, I've just called myself out making a bit of a rookie mistake. Um, it's very important that you reset all of the channels before you try and automate something. Um, because actually what we've done is we have recorded all of the channels in that way. And what we, all we wanted to do was change our color on 46 and 47. So you can see there. So I'm going to delete these two. Just start it again. Because we want to keep them nice and separate. So we'll reset all our channels. Add in two Q steps. And the first one, we're going to go to our blue. And we're going to oh, turn the lights on to 63. And then the next channel, you can see, so we've got blue and dim is on, saved on that channel now. And then we will go again, leave them on. And we'll go to our orange color. So now we've got two Q steps. One blue, one orange. One blue, one orange. So when we push play, oh, yeah, we're swapping colors. Great. Um, and so now that has been created. So if we drop in. So it's been saved. We've already created it. So now when we open our library, mid-scan color change, we've got our two here. And what I might do, so we've got a couple of ways we can, no, let's do it. So as I said, we want to put it onto the beats. And I think it's most important that we have our wait times rather than the fade so between the color. Can of course do both actually. Let's try both, see what it looks like. So we're going to put both the fade and wait times. On. And then hopefully when we start playing our music, we're going to get some color changes. How about that? Really? That was pretty simple. So, and you'll see here, let's check. as it's moving across, all it's doing, we've got one instructing this line here, instructing these movement controls. So we're moving slowly, and then this effect here is just telling the um, color and the dimmer things how to operate. 
And then we've got a... Yeah, so... There we go. Crazy, exactly. So... There we go, we've just kind of built our own show in about 20 minutes. Um, so if you, if we just quickly go back to this other show that I created, that's all I've done is just repetitions on that same theme of control. So if we go in, make it look a bit better. Really, that's all that's going on. Um, is those very simple controls that I put in place. So we've got these moving lights here. I'm really sorry about the jacket. Uh, we've got some chases on our back wall there with those parking. Um, we've got some color changes on the spheres. And yeah, it's all looking pretty good really. Um, and you can have a look on YouTube. I'll put a link in the um, description box here to have a look at this show without it jerking crazy. Or, um, so I did a screen capture of it. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my mouse to stop. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, so that is, I think, a pretty simple description of how to get some some really nice results, um, beat sync results out of your lights out of Luma DMX. Um, if you have anything else that you um, want a clarification on or something in particular that you want me to go into further detail on another tutorial then please leave your comments in the comments box and uh, get get a hold of uh, Luma DMX and try it out we actually have another video in our um, how to playlist and that will tell you how to download the demo for free and that comes with some um, pretty amazing demo shows that you can try out for yourself as well um, so, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.